Hello there Saints, welcome back. This is going to be part two of the series, short series on the, the doctrine of repentance and more specifically on the subject of the two kinds, the two kinds of repentance. There indeed are two kinds of repentance, brethren, in the Bible. Uh, you have gospel repentance or what would some would call evangelical repentance. And then you also have repentance that comes after salvation, which would which we could call post-salvation repentance. And in this particular, this particular portion, brethren, uh, of this very, very uh, small series, I'm going to be getting in a little bit more into my testimony, and I'm just going to get a little, and I'm just going to share a little bit more of it to kind of show you how the Lord, in His grace and His mercy, and how His Word brought me out of the error that I was in, that I used to be in, uh, when I used to preach repentance of sins. But before I do that, brethren, I want to um, start out once again in m mentioning why I'm doing this video, uh, why I'm actually doing this, this teaching on repentance, brethren. And that is, once again, simply this, because I, I simply see the, the confusion that's out there on this issue. And the very fact that I was once under the, the same kind of confusion, it, it kind of motivates me to to do a teaching on this on this particular subject this, on this particular doctrine because now that I've you know come out of uh, error regarding this issue of repentance I can now see clearly to where I can also help other believers that may be in the error that I used to be in or that may know somebody that's fallen prey for the error of you know preaching repentance of sins for salvation or you know out and out preaching Lord of salvation okay so I do believe there's a there's a need to deal with this issue of repentance, okay? And like I said before, um, me and a me and a couple of brothers have been discussing this very issue. Um, and lately, I've been discussing this particular topic with a, a good brother in the Lord. Uh, he is a um, he is a young pastor, and he is around my just about he is around my same age he's around the same age that I am like I said he's a young minister of the word young pastor and he he strongly believes in faith alone he's told me that numerous times he actually took a very strong stand for me um, over on over on Facebook where he he took a stand and and defended me and and he stood with me as he affirmed faith alone for salvation and so me and this dear brother um, definitely I know he's a, he's a dear brother in the Lord good brother loves the Lord, loves, loves his word, and he loves to, you know, evangelize the lost. And he's a, like I said, he's a, he, I believe he's really, he, he's zealous for the truth and he wants to, and he's even done, you know, his own teachings and sermons against Lordship Salvation and explaining why it's wrong. But what I've noticed is that me and this, me and this dear brother, we have been, you know, really going kind of back and forth and really discussing, getting into the technicality of uh, the very term repentance and what it what it actually uh, how it is actually defined uh, biblically and when we say repentance you know we've actually gotten to this issue we've been and lately we've really been discussing what is the change of mind we know that repentance is a change of mind um, that's very obvious that is how the the Bible the King James Bible defines the term but what we've been discussing lately back and forth is what is it a change of mind about is it actually, is repentance a change of mind about sin? You know, is, is, you know, of course, when I say repentance, I'm talking about gospel repentance, evangelical repentance, repentance unto life, okay? Or is it a change of mind about unbelief? Is it a change of mind about your disposition before a holy God? Now, and of course, I I believe, I the way I define repentance is a, is a change of mind before salvation. Okay, when I'm talking about gospel repentance or repentance unto life, I define it as simply a change of mind about one's unbelief. It's a change of mind about yourself, who you are, in the light of God's word. And there's also a change of mind about the gospel. It's a change of mind about Jesus Christ. And that's how I define repentance. Okay, And, um, and this dear brother, he, he, defi he sees where I'm coming from. He does agree with me, but he also says he, he still sees that repentance is somehow uh, a change of mind about sin. And I've been... You know, basically, like I said, I've been you know lovingly you know discussing this issue with his brother, and, t and I told him recently that that having that kind of definition for gospel repentance will lead to lordship salvation, 
And of course, and if you watch my last video, of course, you know why I say that. Because again, if you're cha if a person, if an unbeliever is changing his mind about particular sins that he's living in, whether it's you know fornication, whether it's um, you know gambling, whether it's drunkenness, if he's having to change his mind about those particular sins, if he's having to change his mind about those particular sins, then what's going to happen is, in, in, in other words, in order to be saved then what's going to happen is in order to determine whether he's saved or not, he has to look back on his life and see whether or not he's actually turned from those sins. Because what is repentance? Repentance is simply a change of mind that leads to a change of action. It's a change of mind that leads to a change of course. It's a change of mind that leads to a change of action, as I defined, as I showed in the last video. Okay? So that's the, the you know, the debate, the discussion that we mean this dear brother have been having. Uh, regarding repentance and of course as you like I said brother you know if it's repentance of unbelief if, if it's a change of mind about unbelief which it is then what the repentance the change of mind of the unbelief leads to is a turning it leads to conversion faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and when a person believes in the Lord Jesus Christ they have in fact turned from unbelief to belief I'll probably mention this again as I get further into this um, as I get further into this uh, study tonight okay but, like I said, brethren, but because I see, brethren, that this issue on repentance, over, over repentance, is still a major issue among, you know, the brethren, many brethren, many, you know, good brothers in the Lord. It's a big issue among many local churches. And are, because I see there's still a lot of confusion and what this confusion can lead to, this, the leaven of, you know, preaching repentance of sins can lead to, which is obviously, obviously Lordship Salvation. Again, this is why I'm doing this video. This is why I also wanted to share my testimony, take some time to share my testimony a little more thoroughly so that way you can see where I'm coming from uh, with my background. And um, hopefully it's a blessing and a help to you, uh, many of you out there. Okay, I, I just pray that this video, my, my testimony will be a help and a blessing to you, brethren. And I pray you can you know, maybe share it to a brother or sister in Christ that may be Kind of you know wavering on this issue of repentance maybe they, they're kind of starting to lean more towards lordship salvation rather than faith alone and um truth be told you're going to see why i believe by the end of this video tonight brother you're going to see why uh faith alone and lordship salvation are simply not compatible okay and why you know if you're preaching repentance of sins why that is going to why that why that kind of preaching is going to lead to lordship salvation it just is Okay, so having said that, brother, let me go ahead and um, I want to now share my testimony, and some of my testimony, I should say, um, of how I came to accept free grace theology, faith alone, in Christ alone, okay? Because I, I have not always accepted free grace theology. I have not always held the view on repentance that I do, that I do now, okay? But ever since I came to accept free grace theology, I now understand that there are two kinds of repentance. One for the unbeliever, which is which is repentance of unbelief, and then one for the believer, which is repentance of sins. Okay, a different issue. Uh, still repentance, still change of mind, but but what the person is changing their mind about obviously is going to be different depending on depending on who it is that's changing their mind. If it's the unbeliever, it's un, the change of mind about unbelief, and if it's a Christian, then it's a change of mind about his sins. Okay, so let me go ahead and. Um, Give you the background, brother. Give you some of my background and my testimony. Okay. A few years back, brother, I was uh, I was preaching with a group of believers, group of young young Christian men in the Lord, and um, these were men that I met during my time of street preaching. Now, of course, I'm still I'm still a street preacher. Okay. I still go out there and preach on the streets, as you know. Obviously, if you if you regularly follow my channel, you know that. From time to time, I upload you know videos of my street preaching and then some other brothers that I still preach with today. And so I met these brothers that I'm talking about a few years back that I used to preach with. I met them. I met them through other believers, other street preachers. Okay, and um, ever since I met these uh, these these brothers, these brothers in the Lord that are all based out of Florida. Okay, and so basically we we developed a, a good friendship and. Uh, we started preaching together, and you know, we would go to different places. We would go to mosques, and we would go to we would go to the mosque over in Temple Terrace. We'll preach outside of the mosque. We would go to events like Gasparilla. We'll preach out, 
would preach there. And then we started going to a church in Port Ritchie, and we met this pastor, he was also a street preacher, okay? And um, he had a house church, basically. And we started going in and attending there. I would, I would attend a number of the services. Uh, there was a time when I was attending their, his Wednesday night services there over at, in Luke Port Ritchie at his uh, house church. And, um, and basically I was just, you know, like I said, uh, you know, congregating a lot of times with, with these brethren and, and the, their pastor. These brethren that I'm talking about, they were, actually were became members of this uh, this church over in Newport Ritchie. And um, around, I, I want to say around the year 2019, a uh, young man, a young man who was uh, who had a military a military background, um, he came he came to the service one night. Or he came, I think he came to like a, a movie night. They had a, it was a Friday movie night, and he came to it, and uh, and basically he was not saved yet. He was kind of the Lord was. It appeared that the Lord was working on his heart, and was um, basically convicting him about his about his sins. And uh, so this this young man who again he had a military background. He was based out of Saint Petersburg. He used to live in Saint Petersburg with his uh, with his wife and some of their family. And basically, uh, he was um, he started attending the services of this church in Newport Ritchie, and then he ended up joining the church. He didn't start attending the services regularly, and he ended up getting um, saved one night. He said he had a testimony of how he got saved. Okay, one night he was um, standing by the back of his truck, and he just um, and he said that he cried out to God, he seeked the Lord, and. He, he cried out to the Lord to, to save him. Now, what I will say is this, brother, if he believed in the gospel, if he believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he believed in that gospel, um, then he got saved. Before he, he cried out to God, if he believed the gospel, the simple gospel of grace, believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for his sins, was buried, rose again on the third day, and if, you, and if he was trusting in Christ alone to save him, then I believe he got saved. And of course, I believe that he just called upon the Lord or cried out to the Lord after the fact that he was already saved. And so I definitely do believe he got saved if he believed the gospel, the clarity of the gospel, the true gospel of grace, and trusted in Christ alone to save him, that I do believe he's saved. And after this guy got saved, he um, started preaching more. He started to you know, get really zealous in studying the scriptures and reading the word. And, and so we started, and of course, he started going out on the streets and preaching more. I would, he would invite me, I would join with him and some other, and the same brothers I'm talking about, you know, the other two brothers, and we would go out and preach, you know, at different events, we'd go outside of the gas stations, and we would basically go out, usually during the weekends, go to same places in St. Petersburg, sometimes we would go places in Tampa, and we'd just, you know, preach on the streets, basically proclaim the name of Christ. And there came a time, brethren, that, and, and mind you, brethren, this was during, back during the time when I was still preaching the error of repentant repent of your sins, you know, turn from sin, repent of sins. And you know what, brethren, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to do this, brethren. Now, I wasn't planning to give their names, but I'm just going to go ahead and give their first names and leave it at that. The name of these brothers that I'm referring to are Yusuf, uh, Elijah, and Alan, okay? So those are the names of the brothers that I was, I used to preach with, okay? Now, now what happened was Brother Allen, he ended up being invited to go basically move up to Mississippi and to join a house church up there, a holiness church, okay? And I believe it's it's still a house church. And Allen, Brother Allen, decided to go. He agreed and he ended up going up there and moving up to Mississippi. So he moved from St. Petersburg up to Mississippi. And I can't remember the exact timing when he actually moved up to Mississippi. I remember when I last saw him before he moved, it was one night we were preaching in Ebor City and after that we, he had told me about his plan to move up to Mississippi. And so to make a long story short, brother, and you know, by the way, he does have a, a channel on YouTube where he you know, posts his content, posts videos of the street preaching, and um, posts also videos of members from his local, the local church that he attends up there, the Holiness Church up there. He'll also have a video footage of them preaching as well. And I kept following this, like I said, I kept following this channel. I kept up with a lot of his videos because I just wanted to, you know, see how I was doing. And, you know, just was, as a street preacher, I tend to watch other videos of street, other street preachers and to, to see how they deal with the laws and see how they uh, approach certain issues. 
as they are as they are engaging with people out on the streets. And, and I remember after some time, I, I started noticing when I was, um, you know, looking at some of his videos, watching some of his interactions with, with the lost, and I noticed that he was saying you know, things like, "If you're if you're living in sin, then you're going to hell," and he would also make statements like, you know, as he was dealing with different people while he was out preaching on the streets, he would say things like, if you're, if you're not living holy, you're not going to heaven, or things of this nature. If you're still living in sin, you're going to hell. Okay. And that basically really caught my attention, brother. Okay. That was actually some of the red flags that I was like, well, hey, that doesn't sound right. You know, because I knew that if a person has to live holy to go to heaven, then their salvation, that person's salvation, is dependent upon them, how they live, and not upon, and that it's not contingent upon the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So right there, when I was hearing Brother Allen uh, make these statements like, if you're not living holy, you're not going to heaven, or if you're living in sin, then you're on your way to hell. Okay? And I and I caught that. That really caught my attention, like I said, because it was a red flag that went up. I was like, wait a minute, that's, that's a works-based salvation. Because again, we don't. Nobody goes to heaven based on how they live. Okay, so after I started, you know, hearing Brother Allen say these things as he was out preaching on the streets and, and, and so forth, I had made, I had planned to basically talk with him the next time he would come down to, uh, you know, Florida. I planned to, you know, address these concerns I had regarding what he was regarding the very things that he was saying. These very things I'm mentioning here that he was saying while he was out there preaching on the streets. So I plan to you know, confront him in love, obviously, and to address these issues and concerns with him. Concerns that I had, you know, over the things he was saying. And so, and then sure enough, a couple of months later, it ended up happening where Brother Allen ended up coming back to Florida. He was just visiting, obviously, for the weekend. And uh, he came out to preach and... I met up with him and the other brothers. Uh, we met up, met up in Emor City uh, one night while he was here visiting over the weekend. And it, and it was after preaching that night in Emor that we went out. We all went out to eat. We all went out to eat at a certain certain restaurant. And it was there where I was basically I had an open door to confront him. You know, so I, I confronted Brother Allen, and I and then of course there was it was me him and a few other brothers there sitting at the table. And basically, so it wasn't just me and Brother Allen were there discussing this issue. It was, it was us, it was me and him along with other brethren that were there hearing the conversation as well and hearing, basically hearing out my concerns regarding this matter. Because I was basically confronting him with my concern that he was preaching a works-based salvation based on what he was telling people, you know, you know, you gotta give up your sin if you want to, you know, if you, you want to be saved, you got to be willing to give up your sin, and you you got to you got to live holy. If you're not if you're not living holy, you're not going to heaven, and things of that nature. And so I was pointing out, I was pointing out to him from the scriptures why preaching that is preaching a works based salvation. And um, and I remember um, I know Brother Yusuf was there. I, yeah, Brother Yusuf was there. Uh, Brother Elijah he wasn't there that night. He wasn't there at the table, but Brother Yusuf was there. As me and Alan were discussing this issue, and so was another brother, a dear brother in the Lord, uh, brother brother Tim, brother Tim, and um, there was another brother there too. I can't remember. I don't know. I, I can't remember his name actually, but I do remember there was even another brother there too that was also sitting at the table. And like I said, you know, I just you know I, I confronted brother Alan in love. You know, I just I shared with him my concerns, and I told him that I basically told him that if he was not going to repent of preaching this works-based salvation, I could not preach with him anymore. And so I ended up uh, saying that, you know, I would have to disfellowship from him and separate myself from him and could not, I could not fellowship with him anymore until he repented of this, this, this error of preaching a works-based gospel, a works-based salvation. So the sad thing that happened was obviously Brother Allen did not, he was not willing to see the truth that I was sharing with him from the scriptures. And so we ended up, we obviously ended up separating our company. We disfellowship from one another that very night. And uh, I actually, I ended up disfellowshipping from the other brothers as well over, the, over this very issue because they didn't seem to see what the problem was.
In other words, they didn't see what I saw, okay? And so after that time, brethren, uh, after this break in fellowship occurred between me and Brother Allen and, and some of these other brothers who were also were street preachers as well, I began to, uh, the Lord began to lead me to uh, some videos on, on the, the internet by um, Pastor Ralph Hickey Arnold. And I began to listen to Ralph Hickey Arnold, and I even started to upload and mirror a lot of his teachings on my, my very own channel here on YouTube. And, and I remember I started listening to Ralph Hickey Arnold's teaching on the two natures, and uh, he's done quite extensive studies on the two natures. And I also listened to his teachings against Calvinism, and how that Calvinism and the gospel of grace are not compatible. And then I even started listening to his uh, teachings on Lordship Salvation. Um, and I just remember the Lord was really opening my uh, opening my eyes to the truth, to the error that which I was in, by the way, brother. Because here I was, brother, here I was, I was confronting a, a brother, again, I do believe he's saved, I was confronting a brother about the leaven he was preaching, and yet I also was in error. Here I was, I, I too was in error. I was preaching loving too, in my preaching, in my street preaching. Because at the time, you have to understand, brother, when this happened, when I broke fellowship with Brother Allen, I was still preaching repent, repentance of sins. So I was still preaching the heresy of repent of your sins for salvation during the time when this, this meeting happened between me and him and the other brothers. And I didn't really see that until I began listening to uh, Ralph E. Arnold, and listening to his sermons on the two natures, uh, on sermons dealing with the true gospel of grace versus Calvinism, and also versus Lordship Salvation. And the Lord began to really open my eyes of understanding uh, to the true gospel of grace. And the scriptures were giving me illumination on this issue. And I remember it was, um, and I also, and I should mention this too, it was not just Ralph E.D. Arnold that, that helped me come to accept uh, faith alone. It was also... Brother uh, brother Edward Finninger. I remember I started listening to teachings by Brother Edward Finninger because he also talked about uh, the issue of worship salvation a lot. And he also dealt with the issue of faith alone, how it's a true gospel, faith alone in Christ alone. And Brother Ed, Ed Finninger's teachings really helped me out a lot too. They helped my understanding. And um, and of course, you know, Ralph Hickey, he also did a, did a couple of videos on the issue of repentance, what repentance is. What it's not, and um, and also another another minister that uh, was able to that had an influence also in my uh, in helping me to understand this issue of repentance a little a little better it was also my very own pastor. Okay, my, my very own pastor. His name is Steve Barber, and uh, he's a he's a pastor out in Sethner, uh, the local church where I attend. I'm a member of, and um, I remember recently I was sitting down with my pastor. And uh, and I I sought out you know his his input and on this very issue of repentance on the on the very on the very issue of what you know gospel repentance is. I remember I was sitting down with him in in his office, and uh, he had basically confirmed to me that it's conviction of sins. You know you, you got to be a person a sinner has to be under conviction of sins where they understand that they're a sinner, they understand they're lost, they're dead in Adam. Um, and then they understand their need for a savior. They, they understand their need for Jesus Christ. And then, of course, after a conviction of sins, it was um, it's repentance of unbelief, where the, the sinner changes his mind about himself. He has a change of mind about God, about Jesus Christ. Um, he basically also has a change of mind about his disposition, you know. And then, of course, after that, the, the repentance of unbelief is what leads to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, faith in the gospel. And then after salvation, then comes repentance of sins, and then the issue of turning from sins. That's all after salvation, of course. And so when I was in, in uh, my pastor's office talking with him about this issue, because like I said, I was um, I was also seeking my pastor's seeking my pastor's counsel and wisdom because you know my pastor he's been he's been preaching the gospel of grace for over over thirty years now, and so you know with with that time. And so with that kind of a you know track record of being a, a pastor, a preacher of the word for 30 years, preacher of the gospel of grace for 30 years, you know, there's there's wisdom there. There's there's uh, understanding, there's there's uh there there's understanding. It, it, it's wise to go to your elders, it's wise to go to your pastor and and to talk 
talk to your pastor about these very issues, these important issues. And so I was, you know, really encouraged. My pastor, when I, me and my pastor were talking, and he confirmed to me that, you know, he believes it's conviction of sins, conviction of sins, and then you have repentance of unbelief, and then which leads to faith in the gospel. And then, you, of course, after that, you have repentance of sins, and 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 so forth. And so even my, like I said, my pastor, um, uh, Pastor Barber, he also had a. a a good influence in helping my understanding as well on this issue of repentance of unbelief. Okay, and of course, again, like I said, I mentioned. I know I mentioned Brother Edward Finninger. He's a really good teacher on YouTube as well, um, and he really. Uh, one, one thing I, I will, um, one thing I will say about Brother Edward Finninger, I really like how that, you know, he gets into the technicality. He's gotten into the technicality of the very term repentance, what it is, and uh, he's good with it. He's very good at explaining the issue of repentance at a very detailed level. You know, he's very, he gets very technical with each term, repentance, conviction, and, and faith, and, and so forth. And so, and so that's definitely one of the things that I appreciate about Brother Edward Finninger. You know, he's a really good teacher, a free grace teacher. You know, he defends faith along very well. And of course, again, again, Ralph Yankee Arnold, too. He's um, very good sound teacher as well uh, again he's also a sound believer he's also a preacher of the gospel of grace defense faith alone and, and, and so forth and ralph yankee arnold he does you know phenomenal teachings on the two natures really good teachings on that issue it's i believe it's a very foundational uh to understand that doc the doctrine of the two natures of the believer and i believe that the lord used these men that i just mentioned these these, these uh ministers um to to help my understanding you know of course, ultimately, the credit goes to the Word of God, the King James Bible, and the Holy Spirit, um, because they are the ones that give illumination. And it was by their grace I, you know, came out of the error of uh, preaching repentance of sins. Because once again, I, mean, I used to define, you know, I never, I never defined repentance as Brother Allen did. You know, Allen believes you got to turn from your sins. You got to be willing to forsake. You got to forsake your sins. You can't simply trust Christ for salvation. You have to actually give up your sin and forsake your sin to be saved. Or you got to stop sinning. You got to stop, you know, breaking the law. And I never, you know, taught that you got to give up your sin in order to be saved because I knew that if I preached, and I know I mentioned this before, like I said, I understand, brethren, that some of the things I'm, I'm covering in this study are redundant. But again, I, I just, I need to, sometimes I need to go over these things once again. I, because I understood, brethren, very clearly that if I told a lost sinner, that they have to stop sinning or be or, or give up their sin or quit their sins before they can be saved. I understood very clearly that that's not grace. That's works. And that's God's not going to save anybody through a works-based gospel. Okay? So I understood that. So I never I never defined repentance as stop sinning or giving, giving up any particular sins. But when I was still under the error, but when I was still preaching repentance of sins, how I defined repentance, how I used to define repentance back at that time is I would define repentance as a change of mind about uh, sin. I would define repentance of sin as a change of mind about sin right, or a change of attitude, okay? And I know that that's not necessarily a blatant works-based salvation, right? But the problem with the definition that I used to adhere, that I used to ascribe to repentance was that it leads to lordship salvation, okay? Because it... What is repentance again, brethren? It's repentance is a change of mind that leads to what? A change of action, a change of course. Okay. An unbeliever is changing his mind about his particular sins that he's committing, that he's living in, before he gets saved, before he can be saved, okay, then obviously in order to determine whether this person is saved or not, what do you have to look, look at? You have to look at whether or not he's still living in those sins, Okay. So again, that's what is that? That's lordship salvation. And so, even though I was not, you know, preaching, you got to stop sinning or give up your sin, you know, like you know, Alan was, and Alan, like sadly, Alan is still preaching today. Um, still, though, I was in error too. I, ironic as it is, even though I was still preaching heresy back then, and even though I was preaching that error and that leaven and that heresy back then, I still was able to, I still was able to discern a a works based gospel. When I heard one, and so, brother, it's just incredible, you know. But I'm glad that the Lord took me out of the era that I was in. And when I realized, like I said, it took some searching, more searching of the scriptures, uh, listening to sound teaching, and um, to actually get out of the era that I was in, that I used to be in. And um, 
like I said, when I came to accept free grace theology and faith alone in Christ alone, uh, the true gospel of grace, uh, basically that was when I came to understand that repent, the two kinds of, there are two kinds of repentance, that repentance before salvation is simply a repentance of unbelief, it's a change of mind about what you're trusting in, and you're simply converting that trust onto Jesus Christ solely onto him for salvation. And then, of course, after salvation, then the issue of repentant, repentance of sins comes into focus, okay, because that's a walk issue. And so, and so that's basically, brother, how I came to, uh, how I came to accept free grace theology, how I came to accept faith alone and Christ alone, okay. It, it didn't happen right away, but I started to, but it first began when I started noticing the leaven and the error that, that Brother Allen, a brother I used to, like I said, preach with and have fellowship with, that he was preaching out on the streets. That he was preaching. And how did I how did I not catch that before? Before he moved up to Mississippi? I don't know. I really don't know, brother. You know, I tend to think that he kind of got worse when he, after he moved up to Mississippi. You know, and by the way, that church that I was attending over Newport Ritchie uh, with these brothers, with these with these brothers a few years back, that was a Lordship Salvation Church. There you go. It was a Lordship... And it, and it still is this very day. It's, it still is a Lordship Salvation Church, okay. And so it started with, and so it started with me first seeing the error that Brother Allen was in, and confronting him with it. His error of preaching a works-based salvation. It was first dealing with the red flags that I saw coming from his preaching, but I didn't really see the error that I was in until I started, like I said, coming across teachings by uh, Ralph Yankee Arnold, and uh, you know I started listening to. And then of course I listened to Edward Finninger, and then of course um, my pastor, how he would preach on uh, conviction of sins, you know, the issue of, you know, what you're repenting of, you're changing your mind about yourself, you're changing your mind about Jesus Christ. That was the the issue there. Okay, so so little by little, the Lord was beginning to to open my eyes to this issue, the truth about this very issue, and on, over repentance, gospel repentance versus post salvation repentance. And, and uh, the Lord and His Word, the King James Bible, they were helping my understanding. And until that very day, that very moment when I came to fully embrace, for, you know, like I said, faith alone, uh, faith alone in Christ alone, free grace theology, or what some today mock as easy believism. You know, a lot of a lot of believers, a lot of ministers, pastors, they sadly mock it as easy believism. Um, and so that's what happened, brethren. That's how the, basically the Lord, you know, led me. Uh, led me out of the era that I was in, of preaching repentance of sins. It was, uh, you know, and I started listening to sermons on the two natures by, by Yankee Arnold. I listened to his stuff on, I listened to a lot of his uh, messages on repentance, uh, his preaching against Calvinism, and I just little by little, as my understanding on the two natures got better and better, as my understanding on the issue of repentance got, got more solid. And um, like I said, I, all the glory, all the credit, all the glory, ultimately goes to the, the precious Holy Spirit and also the Holy Word of God, the King James Bible, um, because they, they, they are the ones, because they are what ultimately give illumination. They give the understanding, okay? Um, and I will just say this too, brother, before I move on to the, the next uh, notes I have here for this uh, tonight's video, I will just say this, you know, I, I do love these brethren that I mentioned that I used to preach with a few years back, you know, Elijah, Yusuf, uh, Brother Allen, you know, I do love these brethren. I, I still do love them in the Lord. Um, I really wish they would be able to see what, what I what I've seen, what, what the Lord has allowed me to see, the truths that the Lord has allowed me to see from His Word. I really do wish that you know Elijah and Yusuf and Allen would humble themselves and would come to accept free grace theology, faith alone, and Christ alone. And um, I believe that there's still hope that they could come to repent of. You know the false gospel that they're preaching even to this very day and start to preach faith alone and Christ alone I, I still have hope for them and I will also say this about brother Allen too is that you know what I liked about brother Allen back during the time when I was still fellowshipping with him and and even you know still preaching with him even though I was wrong I was an error for doing that okay but he was a brother he was a brother that was very hospitable he was, he was always very hospitable towards me and the other other brethren you know he he had me in his home a few times. He, he welcomed me in his, into his home. Uh, 
he welcomed me around his family and uh you know so the guy the brother was definitely a very very hospitable you know towards the brother towards the saints and for that i was very appreciative of that you know um so there's no there's no hard feelings there's no i don't have any malice at all or ill feeling towards those brothers i do love them again and i i wish the best for them i really do but it's sad that they're still preaching an accursed gospel a works-based salvation and uh and I, I still do pray for the repentance. I really do. So with that, brethren, I'm going to go ahead and continue on here. My next, um, now that I've been able to share at least some of my testimony, part of my testimony of how I came out of the era of, you know, repentance of sins and came to accept faith alone in Christ alone, faith alone in Christ alone for salvation. In other words, free grace theology. Um, let me go now and I want to read some scriptures here that I have, that I have listed here to read read from and I want you you know I would encourage you to follow along with me in your in your King James Bibles if you would the first scripture that we're going to look at I'm going to kind of show you the contrast between once again between gospel repentance what uh, gospel repentance says which is repentance of unbelief and then I'm also going to read some scriptures that deal with post salvation repents which is repents for the believer repents for the christian okay to do so let's go to brethren to acts chapter 20 and uh acts chapter 20 verse 21 and um i'm gonna read a few verses here again that's acts chapter 20 And actually, brother, I'm going to actually start out with verse 17, and then I'll go down to verse uh, verse, 20, verse 27 here. So Acts chapter 20, verse, beginning here at verse 17. Um, this is uh, Luke writing. Luke is the author of the book of Acts. This is going to be Paul, Paul speaking here. Okay, Acts chapter 20, verse 17. The scripture says here, And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, uh, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears. Again, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the line and weight of the Jews. Verse 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I have shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Verse 24, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take, wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So this is Paul, as you know, charged to the elders of Ephesus before he departs and leaves. Um, let me go back to uh, verse 20 and 21, brethren, here. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Now notice this, brethren, repentance toward God. Notice he doesn't say repentance from sin. He doesn't say repentance. He does not say repentance of sin. Okay. He simply says repentance toward God. Okay. That's where we get our definition of repentance, gospel repentance, as being a, a change of mind about who God is. Okay. You're changing your view of God, in other words. You're changing, you're changing your view of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. So again, uh, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see here we have repentance toward God, we, where we, that is basically where the unbeliever changes his view of God. And by the way, repentance, of, repentance toward God, if you're changing your mind and your view about who God is, you're obviously going to have a change of mind about who you are as well. 
okay? Because they go hand in hand. If you're going to have a change of mind about who God is, that definitely will cause you to have a change of mind about who you are, okay? And then it says here again, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So you're placing your faith. Once you change your mind about who Jesus Christ is, who God is, now you're placing your faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. You're believing in him, trusting in his, his finished work to save you. And then go back down here to verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that, that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So this repentance and faith, right, this repentance toward God and this faith toward, toward our Lord Jesus Christ, this is, it, it's correlating with the gospel of the grace of God. And that's the very gospel that we preach today, brother. Okay, so this is definitely uh, when Paul writes about repentance here towards God, he's dealing with gospel repentance. Okay, repentance of repentance unto life, in other words, that's what gospel repentance is. It repents unto life, repents unto salvation. Okay, eternal salvation, that is. And again, we know that that this uh, what he writes here about repentance and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that it does correlate with the gospel because, again, he, he says it right here in verse 24. Uh, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Okay. So it's very important to point that out. And when, a, when an unbeliever is given the gospel, when he's, when a, when a person, when a minister, a, a personal worker, when they preach the gospel to the sinner, and he hears the gospel being preached, the clear gospel of grace, and the sinner comes under Holy Ghost conviction where he he's, um, he sees himself as he truly is. He sees himself as a sinner, as an unbeliever. He sees himself as a, a, a lost sinner on his way to hell, deserving of hell, and he realizes that only Jesus Christ can save him, right? And there, therefore he repents of what? He's repenting toward God. He's, having a, he's repenting of his unbelief, okay? And that change of mind about his unbelief will lead to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And it's that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, when he believes the gospel, he that is when he has actually turned from unbelief to belief. Because, once again, brethren, I know I, I mentioned this in the, the previous video, you got to remember something, repentance is not the turning. I know a lot of ministers still make that error. I, I used to make that very error too, okay? Again, when I was, a few years ago, when I was preaching, when I defined repentance as a change of mind, about sin, which was wrong again, because that leads to Lord's salvation. Another thing I was doing was that I was teaching that repentance or turning from sin. I also was preaching turning from sins. And I preached that, and I used to define turning from sin as simply a mental turning from sin. Okay? So that's what I used to teach too. I used to teach that not only was I preaching repent of your sins, in other words, have a change of mind about your sins, which was again was wrong, but I also used to teach turn, turning from sins. Okay? And again, that also is wrong because a person, a lost person cannot turn from their sins because they only have one nature, okay? And I mind you now, I, didn't, I never defined it, the turning from sin as a quitting sin or stopping sin before salvation because once again, I knew that was a blatant works-based salvation, okay? And that's false. But how I defined, how I defined the turning from sin before salvation, I, I had defined it as a mental turning from sin, okay? And again, that's still that's still wrong in error because you can't a lost sinner cannot turn from sin even mentally because again they don't have a new nature. Okay, they sin because that's who they are, but they cannot change their nature. Just like a, a leper cannot change his spots, you cannot cause a, you cannot cause a sinner to change his nature. That's what who he is. That's why he needs a new nature. That's that's the issue. So I just want to mention that too. How I used to define um, not only how I used to define repentance of sin to be a change of mind about sin. Again, that was wrong, but also how I used to find turning from sin as a mental turning from sin. And I know some other ministers that, that defined it like that as well. Um, and again, that's wrong. That was also wrong, okay? Because you can't, a person, an unbeliever cannot turn from their sins, whether mentally or not, because they only have one nature. They only have their sinful nature, and that's it.